Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today. It is hardcore, and uh, we need to talk to Tiago over here. Oh, Not hey, Tiago. It's Andrew. good to see you. It is. I'm gonna dance. I've been. Me I'm gonna dance. We're gonna dance. I've been meaning to ask you, what's with the hair? Oh, it's my. It's to express my individuality. Is that a bald spot? It's hard to tell for sure with the fused together spikes, but it looks like he's balding, says our perception. Or is it because you're balding, I'm gonna ask. Or because I'm balding, yes, I, I want to fuse the remains of my hair together before it leaves me. I want to show my hair. I don't give a fuck how old you think I am. I'm 20. Then why am I asking you this, Andre? How old are you? Even though you just said that he's 20. What? How was... Not 20. He said... Okay, I'm super confused. Is it important to you to be an individual? Of course it is. Otherwise, I'd be just another poor guy with no education and no money. General issue, man. Now, I'm all that, and I am... I have radical spikes. Fair enough. He looks at the molten toothbrush. Maybe it was a bad idea. Anyway... Um, I don't know what that molten tooth toothbrush is supposed to be about. Kim, what's up? Yes. I did this nothing. Okay. Uh, let's have a chat with these people, see if I can increase my chances of dancing. She's whistling a melody, her trusty contact mic attached to a wooden pulpit. At the sound of your footsteps, she stops what she's doing and turns to you. Hey there. I've been recording some new audio from all these beams and rafters. The sounds traveling through the wood are pretty cool. Creaks and stuff. Like you're underwater, you know. But like, underwater inside a tree. But that's not really what I wanted to talk about, she says. I wanted to thank you instead. Uh, what for? For getting me and my friends in here. And we even found some new associates, such as they are. Uh, how's everyone doing? Good, I think. Noid is getting a read on the place. I think he finds the carpentry very impressive. Andre has been setting up the compressor and dancing. Egghead's getting the party up. He's got the stage under control. Suna, the programmer, she's doing whatever she does behind that radio computer of her. She doesn't talk to us much. And the crab man hasn't shown himself, thank God. It's also interesting that she says behind the radio computer of hers, even though she's in front of the radio computer. However, I believe that might be a holdover from just the way people think about sitting at a computer. Um, because I know for a fact that in Portuguese, the translation of sitting at a computer actually translates to sitting on the computer. Which, you know, if you're not aware of what you're saying and you're a Portuguese speaker and are translating to English, you say sitting on a computer, everybody laughs at you. Or they just think you're weird and sitting on your computer. But it might actually be that another language says behind a computer and it makes sense in their language because it doesn't in English, I'm pretty sure. Maybe it does. Well, I suppose it would definitely make... Uh, sense if she was at a desk or something at like a, re a reception desk or something and she would be behind the computer uh, but anyway or behind the computer also works for a network connection yeah that also works there yeah there's a, there's a, a lot of situations in English where this works I don't think it does on that uh, now can I'm gonna ask can you tell me about your associates now sure you helped us all out I can repay the favor what do you want to know uh, I want to know about Andre, honestly, because I want to dance. <laughs> Andre, he's a cool guy. Doesn't really come off as one, but he is. To me, at least. He takes care of shit. Sorry, I mean, he's got a vision of what life should be, you know? He tries to push things until everything falls into place. He's, I, was, I thought the sentence was going to go until everything falls apart. He's an organizer, she says. Okay, yeah. What has he organized? Nothing, but then again, there's nothing to organize around here either. He really wants this church thing to work. Must have taken it as a sign when he found it abandoned like that. Said it was an augury. I don't know where he got that from. She smiles. Andre is not super intelligent. I've never seen him so psyched about anything, though. And he's often psyched. 
who looked sort of desperate, uh, like it's his last chance of, or something. Or maybe he was just high. I mean, not that he does drugs, just high, you know? On life. <laughs> I don't actually know what, like, I, like I, I, I know being high on life is a reference to something, but I'm not 100% sure what it is a reference to. It's common parlance, though, but it isn't... I think it has an origin. Maybe in anti-drug uh, propaganda in the US, maybe? Like, I'm not high on drugs, I'm high on life, dude, bruh. And, or whatever, I don't, I have no idea. Here in Portugal, we didn't really, I didn't grow up watching, uh, having a lot of anti-drugs propaganda on television. Although the news certainly did, uh, did a, a fair amount of work for that. In the 90s, we had a terrible, uh, cr uh, terrible case of uh, just um, <clears throat> HIV, I believe, uh, in, uh, in, in other, uh, uh, contagious diseases, uh, diseases, diseases as well, um, because of drug use, uh, and uh, and then we instituted the decriminal. No, how's it go? How does it go in English? Decriminalization, yeah, of drug use and possession for personal personal use, uh, and uh, that allowed you know basically communities to be helped basically, <laughs> and uh, just not have to run away if they ha if they needed to test because of, you know, fear of having HIV or, or hepati hep hepatitis? Is that how it's said in English? Other other uh, diseases like that. Um, and it just solved that issue here. But th th my point is, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why I went on that uh, tangent. My point is, I didn't grow up on, on this sort of um, progr television programming, because I think that's what that is in reference to. On his mother's love. I don't think that's a reference to anything. I'm pretty sure I never heard that. And and then we have Relax Girl. We're police officers, but we're corrupt. Rotten to the marrow. You can tell us about drugs and shit. I don't give a fuck. I wonder... What is that? What is that supposed to mean? That's weird. You know? Because... Well, eh, I don't know. It is weird to me. I'm just going to speak from a personal perspective here. Because if, when I think of a corrupt cop, I I don't think of a cop that uh, tr looks the other way when uh, when drugs um, are in, 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 in the scene, on the scene. I think of the opposite. I think of a, draw, uh, a cop who plants drugs so that they can bust the place up or something. Or certainly if a, a cop that, oh, there's drugs? I, you're all going to die or something. Um, you know, because I'm the boss. Oh, either that or you play, pay me some money or something. I don't know what, what, what the situation would be for a corrupt cop. Um, oh, which is another reason why the decriminalization is a very important thing, because, of course, it affects poor communities more and, and marginalized communities much more than others. Um, so that tangent kind of made sense all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, because that's another problem. The criminalization of drug use... Uh, specifically affects people who are uh, already uh, pursued by cops. And by the, when, when you start thinking about uh, institutional racism and pursuit of the LGBT communities and all this sort of stuff, it's just, yeah, it's all it's all in the history books, really, at the end of the day. It's not really cont uh, contentious, what I'm saying here. Uh, but anyway, um, this apparently is the opposite of that, and I'm not sure what that is supposed to mean. Uh, let's say on life, though. Uh, yes, anyway, she says. Uh, is Andre your boyfriend? This is a leap. Yes, she nods. Tell me about the others. Who do you want to know about? Uh, tell me about Noid. Oh, he's, uh, well, he's a fab... Fabergé? Fabergé. I have heard that word. The, the pronunciation evades me. I have never seen it written. Faber... It's like the Fabergé egg, right? That's what it... Yeah, that is a Fabergé egg. And I don't know how to say it. I suppose it's a faux bourge. Faux bo no, it would be a faux bo faux bou. Faux bourge. Faux bourge. Yeah, that does not sound like the English speaking people that I heard say. As far as I can tell, Farberge. That's I have heard that. Uh, which is, I suppose, a literal uh, reading of that. Anyway, he's a Faubourgé, I guess, like the rest of us. Okay, maybe not Egg. I, I don't know about him. But Noid and the rest are from 
F F oh no, it is not. It is not the Faber J egg or whatever. I I don't know anything. I also don't know what a Faber J egg is supposed to be. Could be like I don't know, fried egg or something. It's from Faberg, uh, making the pilgrimage up north to visit the Palisium. He's real hardcore about the, the lifestyle. What does he do? What do you mean do? Like for a living? Uh, yeah. He's a carpenter, trained in all. He's very good. He just doesn't have the mindset to work like that in a shop somewhere. Then he needs to be a non-site carpenter and just go to places and do furniture. It's built-in furniture. There's a there's a certain there's a type of carpentry for that. Cabinet making, I believe. Or nah, cabinet making is still a workshop kind of work as well. You still need to do a lot of job, a lot of work in the workshop. Anyway, what kind of mindset is that? He abides by the hardcore, sir. You would have to ask him yourself. Uh, and you? Sir? She gives you a switchblade smile. I abide by the law, she says. A strange feeling, says our Inland Empire. Every now and then something feels off about the way she speaks. Yeah, the switchblade switch smile. I don't know what that means. She doesn't change tone, but you feel as though there's more about her than let she lets on. So what is this pilgrimage you're talking about? It's just something poor Fauberg kids do every spring. To pass the time, we walk the entire length of Boogie... Bougie. Bougie Street. Could be Boogie. No, that would have to have two Gs, maybe. Bougie Street up to Jamrock, or as much as... Uh, as, as or as much as that's possible. Why wouldn't it be possible? I don't know, man. Have you been down Bougie Street? It's a little bewildering. Um... Uh, Hmm. I'm sorry, have I not told you I'm a raging alcoholic who recently drank himself into an oblivion so deep he can't remember what sounds like the biggest street in the city? Um, no? Well, I am. Okay, then you should go and take a look, I guess. Bougie Street is cool. It's got a lot of immigrants and all... Uh... Should be E. Should be E. Uh, because, you know, there's two types of migration. It would be the E mig well, the E instead of I migration, and then the I instead of E, uh, which is from outside to inside. And this was would be the... No, wait! That is correct. I'm I'm the wrong. I'm the wrong here. It is correct. It doesn't sound correct, though. Is it, am I mispronouncing it? Do, are they pronounced differently in English? I don't know. Uh, in all kinds of dif different people, she says. Um... It might, I might just do that if I, I make it their life. Yeah, she says and then adds, I hope you do. Uh, actually, tell me about the others. About Suna. Uh, she's a bit odd, I, I have to say. Doesn't talk much. I'm not really sure how to, to vibe with her, you know? Seems like she's not in a very good mood most of the time. But earlier today, she told me about Welkins? Acela grimaces as if it's the first time hearing the word. And she seemed oddly happy, like she had had some idea with those little creatures, some artistic idea. I don't really listen. I didn't really listen. I was busy with my mic. Uh, what about a uh, Heghead? What do you mean? What's the deal? Well, I asked what's the deal with him. Uh, what does he... <laughs> no. Uh, where's he from? How long has he been with you guys? Actually, we don't know where he's from or who he is, really. One time we were out partying somewhere in backwater Foburg, or maybe maybe he's a cop. Oh, that'd be interesting. Or maybe even Coal City. I, I can't remember. Maybe it was Coal City. Egg was yelling along some to some jams. Someone was spinning all night long. Just kept yelling until he didn't have a shred of voice left. When the sun came up over the mines, there were m mines. Yeah, it was in Coal City. She nods. Egg, he egg, because <laughs> she doesn't remember. <laughs> The part because of the parting. Egg came with us. He made this wheezing puppy sound uh, all the way back. Couldn't even speak. It was definitely Coal City because it took us two days to walk back to the fall. He just wheezed the whole way. He never really asked. We never really asked him why he came with us or who he was. I think his name is Germain. People are sweet, she says quietly. You can see it must have been a great night. The memory causes her to go silent for a moment or two. You wish you'd been there, says only in the land empire. Uh, yeah, what does he think he's doing with uh, when he yells all that stuff? Oh, that. He's the party boy. Oh, what's a party boy? I don't think... Well... Nor I wouldn't... Normally, I wouldn't think she's saying 
like a party boy as, as in like that's an expression. I think he's just the boy that likes partying. A nodic music doesn't really do vocals in the traditional sense. Vocals are thought of as rock. Uh, that's to say they're a bit backward. No off no offense if you like rock music though. Rock music is cool by me. Uh Goddamn right, rock music is the coolest. Rock music forever. Yes, she nods. Studiously. Forever. Anyway, even if you don't have vocals, you still need someone to say something every now and then, right? To urge things on. That's where the party boy comes in. Oh, that makes sense. Is that why an MC... I am very bad with any of this stuff, mind you. I, Like, it's not that I don't know music, it's that I don't know this sort of music. Um, but is that why an MC is a, such a common staple in house music and, and just techno music and stuff? I mean, I guess... He, there's there's a hmm, there's a I don't know there's a there's a certain international effect to playing music that uh, uh, that uh, is in, uh, constantly in a foreign language specifically English in, in uh, English uh, music with English lyrics um, I have heard there are people so you probably have heard of people who don't like music from a foreign language or specifically from a language or with a l lyrics from a language that they don't understand because they, they don't understand the words. Um, and growing up in a setting where most of the music uh, has words that you can understand probably breeds... I don't, I don't mean to sort of... <laughs> breed is a charged word. I don't mean to, to be uh, derogative here. But still, uh, for the lack of a better word... Living in a setting where the vast majority of music is of the native language um, probably breeds more people that don't like music from uh, with lo words from another language. Uh, here in Portugal, it is sort of a thing. There are people. I have a an aunt of my, aunt 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 of mine who doesn't like English music because she doesn't understand the words. She just listens to Portuguese music. There's a lot of Portuguese uh, music as well as Brazilian music, and. Uh, and it's just, there's plenty to go around. You are sort of limited w to certain genres, mind you, but which is kind of funny to think about now that I say it out loud. Uh, but but it, that it's that it's how things go. Uh, it it does it it does mean, however, um, and bypassing the whole discussion about how that must fundamentally change your approach to music as a whole medium, because if you're enjoying music just because you understand the words. Um, that's very different from somebody who just, l l for example, listens to classical music because it doesn't have words at all. And you're just sort of like, like, you know, somebody like that can't enjoy classical music, at least not in the same way if they're limited to uh, songs or to songs specifically because they're all sang, but, you know, songs from their native language. Anyway, the point is, uh, internationally, I guess there is, um, like in a dance club, there is a, a, a bigger detachment from the subjects of songs than, um, and, speci and also from the singers, uh, than there are there is, for example, in the U.S. I would say, um, because you know, uh, ing English uh, speaking, uh, English songs are very pervasive all over the world. Uh, so, I think, m I don't know. What I'm saying is, MCs are required. In some dance clubs, if you know, if the dancing is the is the, um, I say this. I've only ever been to one dance club, dance club once, and I hated it. But that's beside the point. Uh, because yeah, you know, I don't know anything. But the point is, MCs are a thing, and he's the MC. Except here is the party boy, because it's anodic music, and nobody likes rock, a except for a cell, a cell school. Um, he basically just stands on the stage and dances and yells how. Uh, how awesome everything is. It's very catchy. <laughs> Kim says, I understand. People are usually afraid to do things if others aren't already doing them. Dancing makes you dance like sneezing makes you sneeze, or yawning makes you... He looks around a little embarrassed of the enthusiasm in his interjection. Anyway. Interesting. He said anyway. And Acel said anyway, back here. She had a line where she specifically said anyway as a way to... Uh, n sort of evade continuing. Yeah, I mean, that that's the thing that's that that is the thing that people do. It's just sort of interesting that it happened twice on two different characters. Um, what about Tiago? Oh, the crab man. She shudders. Still gives me the creeps. 
the way he moves, but he doesn't actually come down that much. He just climbs around the rafters. I just try to stay away from the crab man, but he talks to Noid. They seem to have some thing going on. Oh, he talks to Noid. What for? Beats me. Noid said he, uh, they get along somehow. They're both crazy enough, I guess. What does he do up there? Who knows? She shrugs. He doesn't really answer our questions, see? Not that it's easy to ask them. What are we supposed to do? Y yell up at the tower? Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, tell me about yourself. Me again? Uh, yeah, I forgot. Tell me about yourself. I told you, I'm a silver bird. There's that phrase again, says our reaction speed. It really reminds you of, of something. What does that mean, I'm gonna ask. It means I don't answer questions about myself. There's more to you than you let on. What am I not seeing? All right, she picks up the tape recorder and looks you in the eye. There is. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Some of the questions. I can catch the silver bird. It's reaction speed. I can get my reaction speed up. Especially if that's a white check. Let's go for my reaction speed pens. Okay, so probably I uh, probably should look over here. Ça va faire. Uh, reaction speed. I don't remember having anything with reaction speed. You know, one thing that, that scares me about this system is that if you have something that gives you plus one reaction speed, for example, uh, and another thing that gives you a minus one reaction speed, I don't think, uh, I don't think things show up over here. Uh, and that means that basically I might have uh, only one plus reaction speed on, but I am also might, al might also have something else that is minus reaction speed, so, and th they're both be on. So I would never know to take the thing off. Um, the thing for reaction speed. Well, see, we got the reaction speed pants over here. So the test would be that. We know nothing is on. So, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Well, however, we also don't have any reaction speed pants. Hmm, okay. Well, let's consider increasing our reaction speed. Sounds good to me. It's gonna be pretty tricky. Especially if this failure constitutes something bad give, that gives me a minus. I'm gonna catch the, re the silver bird. Okay, failed. The silver bird has already flown away. I will catch it later. Will I? Come on, game. Come on, game. 17 now. O pássaro de Argent. Argent? No, that wouldn't be Argent. Would that be Argent? In French? That's... that's the, You're missing the little squiggly, but I think we have established this is not Portuguese. Uh, it is very close to Portuguese, but it would be the... The, Ar, uh, the bird's Argent. It flutters... by your ear. It's what the Zemliaki. It's what the Zemliaki call a person who never break under interrogation. Uh, the Zemliaki are the Gradian community in Ravishol. Gradian, actually, that's from a country. It's an organized crime term. I'm gonna say it. O pássaro de argent. Excuse me. She casually brushes her hand through her hair. She's attempting to remain calm, but the phrase made her flinch. Yeah, I remember now. It's a Zemliaki term for someone who won't break under questioning. An organized crime term. What do you mean? The silver bird? All right, she concedes. See, she concedes. My father was a Zemliaki. He died years ago. He was a bad man. Not a lot of good things to say about him and what he did. He bought the family a, a huge house, so we got to live at least temporarily, in a giant castle in Jamrock, and then he died. Hmm, I can imagine what followed after. You and I both, although I don't have to imagine. The competition came and took everything away. It was like in a war zone. She's gritting her teeth. So after his death, we had nothing left, and we were, we were in danger. 
My mother had to change her name. Mine, too. We left it all behind. Are you sure about that? What about this drug lab plan? It was a stupid idea, and I'm still disappointed I came up with it. Aren't there any local authorities who might look down on such activities? Asks, asks Kim. I, I took that into account, of course, she says. Coordinated the operation with the Debardeur, else they might get unhappy. Huh, so what you're saying is Evrard authorized this? Not in person, but I, I let them know. You can't do anything without the fat ones getting, uh, getting wind. It wasn't too difficult to convince them, really. It's a good thing you ended that mess, though. I felt I was turning dad-wise a, into a corrupt business person. Un unpleasant. Come on, this is all fine, but you don't have anything on Evrard now, says our reaction speed. That's not how these things work. Uh, we should confront Evrard about this. Maybe we can manipulate him into, uh, or using this information. No, says Kim. I don't think it would lead anywhere with Evrard. He's just going to deny it. Yeah, she really draws the word out. Have you seen Evrard? Uh, yeah. The quest is still there, though. Ask Evrard about a cell and the drug lab. Well, that's pretty cool. I only needed to use one of my skill points, which means that I will be able to use two of my skill points at most uh, for the dancing. But for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.